So hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this second edition of FDCI Insights, where we converse around uh, various aspects of the fashion industry and how they are changing in a post-pandemic world. On today's panel, we are talking about a key bridge between a brand and its audience, communication, marketing, press coverage. Has the fashion world changed its strategy to get coverage and reach out to a much more tech-savvy consumer today who's been consuming a lot more media working from home? Now, discussing this aspect today, we have a powerful panel of professionals uh, who are really strong voices in the world of Indian fashion. I'll start by introducing Sujata Asumal, one of India's most influential uh, commentators on Indian fashion. Sujata, as many of you would know, was the launch editor of Harper's Bazaar India, and uh, she's led communications uh, for uh, many international fashion brands, uh, so really has a holistic view uh, about the topic that we're discussing today. I'd also like to introduce to you Nandini Bhalla. Nandini, of course, is the editor of Cosmopolitan magazine in India. She's been a fashion journalist for close to two decades now. And certainly, if you follow her on social media, you know that she's an influencer in her own right. Let's also welcome Supriya David. Uh, Supriya David is uh, the former editor of Elle India. Before L, uh, she was at Harper's Bazaar as well as India Today. She's also the author of a novel that was released by Penguin Random House. Let's also welcome Mehrnaz Dhondi. Mehrnaz has completed a decade being editor of Grazia. Prior to her ongoing stint at the magazine, uh, she was with El India for over 10 years, where she left as deputy editor. A warm welcome to you all, ladies. So we'll get to the specifics in just a bit. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is a question for all our panelists. And Sujata, would be great if you could take it up first. You know, just a brief opening comment on what you feel are the new realities of, one, covering fashion, and two, any advertiser behavior that you've noticed in this past year? Well, all the advertisers I've spoken to presently uh, are telling me that it's digital first for them right now. I think that that is the main uh, thrust for everybody. Because don't forget, even retailers are going more e-commerce. Everything is going that way. So I think that is pretty much where we are. It is digital first right now. Uh, Anandini, what would be uh, you know your comment? Digital first always? Yes, yes, yes. Digital first actually has been our goal for the last couple of years. Talking about how to actually cover fashion. I mean, glossies are known to like have these absolutely glamorous shoots, fly down to like sort of Paris and to go and shoot there. Everything came to a right. halt. And we have now learned the fine art of actually doing cell phone shoots or to do face mm. FaceTime <laughs> shoots. So it has been this right. great learning and this and these new skills uh, from the point of view of the clients advertisers obviously uh, when they want to stick with the same brands but they for a little right. while picked out websites social media assets versus just print pdf issues sure uh Marinas, your inputs so what are the new realities your Honestly, uh, digital has been on everyone's mind and not just mine. It's been on our plate for a long time. We've all been moving business strategies, going towards strengthening um, the brands, any brand stronghold across all platforms. But I do think the last six to eight months have accelerated that growth, which would have happened, I think, a little bit more gradually. Uh, mm. In a way, it kind of pushed us all to think more. Uh, all of this would have panned out immediately. I mean, would have panned out in its own time. But right now, I just feel that the last six to eight months have uh, given it that uh, big push. And here we are. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Supriya, uh, what about you? I agree with uh, Sudhasan and Nandi Marinas as well. But And the fact that whatever digital push that has to be, that would have probably been done in the future has been, we are doing it now. But I think what's exciting is the newer set of advertisers that when Nandini said that, you know, we were used to doing shoots uh, in Paris, New York, all of that. But those are also were traditional advertisers with, you know, perhaps the luxury conglomerates. But now I think, as you can see, there is a new set of advertisers that have come into play, whether it's the FMCG brands that would not traditionally look at, say, the digital platforms of a magazine like ours, uh, or perhaps like a wellness even supplements so i think in that it has given birth to a new set of advertisers that we have no choice but to welcome we are no longer sitting in a space where we say hey listen this is not the area where we work 
this is not the kind of clients that we would traditionally work with uh, and yeah. also the fact that all of them want that same digital push and you would have to give them the same level of merit as you would do with to a traditional advertiser hmm. Uh, interesting. I think all of us are agreeing on the fact that it's digital first. And Sujata, you know, coming to you, I think you uh, hit the nail on the head and you really set the tone in a sense when you say for advertisers now, it is digital first. So when you're speaking to advertisers now, uh, the shift has happened, but has it also happened on the side of the publication? I think, uh, like Mayna says, this was happening for a long while. Like Nandini said, we've all been like putting and pushing for digital for a long time. We knew we it was something we had to go towards, but we didn't know it was gonna happen so quickly. This made us switch in our heads like overnight. So I think all of us have, all the publications really have stepped up to the plate, whether it was doing Insta Live, whether it was doing shoots, whether it's the Zoom Live that we now have. I think everybody stepped up to the plate really, really well. Um, I think um, advertisers realized that they, in fact, for them, it took them a little longer to understand the landscape. I actually think the media did it very quickly and overnight and they had to figure out where they had to fit in. What I do think has changed is um, I feel that today, you know, before media had a rate card and it was this much for a page and this much. Now, an advertiser can come and say, my budget is X, Y. What can you do for me? And it's about looking for solutions that work around that. It's not about vanilla advertising, like Supriya said. It's about how we can work together. It's really become more of a one coin and two sides, more than ever before, mm. I feel. Uh, that's interesting, Nandi. That brings me to you. You know, you were mentioned that uh, you know there is a lot more uh, easy filming happening via the mobile phone. Uh, when it comes to brands, you know, Sujata brought up the fact that now uh, it is the advertiser who comes and says, this is my budget. Uh, can you do something in it? What can you do for me? Has that been the strategy at Cosmopolitan as well? Because, uh, I mean, it is a fact that advertiser budgets have been hit quite deeply. Pockets are not as big as they used to be. Uh, how, has, uh, how have you changed your strategy when it comes to accommodating advertisers? Yeah, so, well, um, well, actually various ways um let me just start at the very sort of beginning so when the whole lockdown happened we actually within seven to ten days launched a like sort of instagram issue called the cosmo work from home issue which was just you know it was like this huge risk where we actually got the cover shot through a like phone remotely etc so Bitha was on that cover and we tried to show that you can take magazine quality content onto your Instagram posts. And post, post that, we actually managed to do several cover client-led collaborations, which were great for us. Um, we just as, you know, I mean, we've been talking about this. We actually offer various deals to all clients. Obviously, there's the older traditional print cover, there's the print advertising, etc. We've also got our own in-house influencer sell. So we also look at them bringing things on board for us. Most of the team sort of, well, this is for Cosmo, Harper's Bazaar, Rides, all of us have a certain influencer-led way of looking at things too. So we can say, listen, we can actually offer you you print. We can offer you Instagram. We can we can actually offer you in, you know I mean we can offer you influencer led content. We can offer you Twitter. We can offer you websites. We have all of this, and you can pick and choose depending on your budgets. Uh, you know that's very interesting, Mernaz. Uh, you know there has been I mean influencers existed and were effective even before Corona, but we're seeing this. Uh, you know, massive spike in the number of followers influencers are getting now. There is also a view that, you know, this is where print becomes uh, irrelevant and it is the influencer marketing that works. So how do magazines or how do fashion publications really fit in that space? So uh, magazines, and I would not just say magazine now, I would call it a brand because it's we're not just about being a physical magazine anymore. Our brands yeah. have uh, also been leading a lot of successful influencer-led marketing campaigns since the past couple of years. So this is not a new phenomenon for us. Honestly, I mean, not just to go on about it, but uh, last year we actually won a couple of awards on a year-long Dove influencer marketing campaign that we led as a brand. So in mm -hmm. no way have we fallen behind. 
the dynamics are constantly changing i mean every as every new, uh, couple of weeks there is uh, every new platform has a new app out of this there's some innovation happening constantly all of that filters into all of us as well so our brands have honestly been working with this for a long time you may see mm. a spike in terms of more digitally led marketing campaigns which is what we were talking about today but that is because uh, traditional forms of maybe say outdoor hoardings are like redundant who's going out right now so Correct. but it's not because i can interrupt and maybe you know uh, pivot the question in a different way uh, as a brand would should i be going to uh, you know a brand a publishing brand such as uh, yours or should i be going to the influencer directly pros and cons of both see it depends i would first peg it at who is authentic and uh, who is relatable and who's putting out relevant content uh, to me these things matter more than the medium there are mediums are many uh, where there is influence a brand brings an authority and somewhere there's a confluence of these two as well and honestly if you're looking at campaigns now they are being played out on multiple fronts you might have the same content being uh, personally like put out by an influencer because there's a personal touch obviously attached to that a brand brings in a sort of authority so there's a different aspect to that as well but i feel honestly if i was a brand i would first look for who's putting up uh, relevant and authentic uh, content first Can I just add a little, like sort of little bit to what Mehnaz has just has like just said. I just think that a magazines were the influencer OGs. They were the first ones influencing people for like decades, right? And I think that as as like sort of Mehnaz just like said, magazines are not just what you hold in your hand. a um, magazine is a website it's an instagram influencer twitter influencer award show celebrity collaboration just so much more so to talk about influencers versus magazines i don't think any of us even actually look at that you know i have always said look mm. at the kind of effort people put in to you know to like actually go and pick up a print copy you have to get into your car drive down to the closest news stand pay hard earned money bring it back home that to me is just focused dedicated effort and i think clients advertisers want want that secondly for most sort of influencers their greatest asset is themselves whereas for brands magazine brands we've got global policies guidelines we have teams of trained beauty editors fashion editors everyone's views everyone's thoughts everyone's talents come into that one place i'm going to read out a great uh, study which i had digged out um this is done by a uk based agency uh, in the year 2018 uh, it's called magnetic and during uh, during london fashion week what they found was that magazine posts actually got eight eight sort of interactions per post versus two for a sort of influencer similarly in a similar different finding 70% trust magazine media more than they trust social media interactions so i think that there's a that there is space for like both of them influencers magazines influencers are doing an absolutely fabulous job but i think it's we just see it as this one pool of just people coming in i don't think it's a this versus that Mm. so i think the credibility that a publishing brand uh, brings uh, is perhaps what adds to the weight of the influencer when you know uh, there's a collaboration both are working together point well taken but if we see how different uh, you know scale of brands are uh, putting themselves out there uh, has that changed so supriya do you feel uh, that you know perhaps how a local indian label is marketing itself uh, post the pandemic is different from how a global brand would be doing it I think we live in a world right now where everything is completely democratic. I don't think we we are in a position right now to say okay this is an Indian brand this is an international brand and I think we have to look at it in a lens that everyone's equal. Yes some might have larger marketing budgets to think you know more out of the box but the very fact that they come to you to your magazine to your brand allows you to give them that same accord so i think everyone's adapting to new realities you still see indian brands going off to maldives to shoot right now because it's opened up but the fact is that they're doing it someone's taking that chance to do so 
Similarly, you see what Louis Vuitton has been doing with the shows with Virgil Abloh is doing in Shanghai, you know, key junctions. So it's a matter of, I think, being innovative within the, I mean, in the situation that the pandemic allows you to do so without really, I mean, this is a time for you to think out of the box when you look at the product campaigns, when you look at how Ray Simmons and Mutia Prada were talking to each other. Those are all conversation starters. Those are all inspirational pointers for all of us to say, hey, listen, this also can be done. These are digital shows this is how you market this is how you can shop online this is what you can do and i think i mean you ha- this gives you that chance to explore because there is no situation that saying hey listen i can't do this you have to give this a shot at this mm. point of time and that also depends on how mm. you're leveraging it whether it is through influences whether it's to a point of authority there are still global magazines who are still coming out issue after issue you know and similarly with yeah. cosmopolitan and with uh, razia so i think it's a matter of doing what you can with the resources that you have in the time that you're living in yeah so so jata uh, you know uh, we touched upon digital fashion weeks uh, fdc has also uh, done those but do you feel that has also changed the way uh, you know a designer's message is now communicated or do you think reporting on fashion uh, in a sense from a fashion week specifically is more or less the same i think that the game had changed a long time ago i haven't physically traveled i'm been a freelancer now for several years um so i've been out of the the mainstream circuit So I haven't physically traveled for a fashion week for many years now. I was watching most of the shows uh via Instagram. So that had changed a long time ago. Um so I think this this in a way accelerated the process. Um but what has happened is that I think people did not actually value how much the physical show brought and the beauty and the escape yeah. physical show. And I think people have realized that. And what these films have done is um they've made people reexamine how fashion really is about the joy the joy has been brought back to the center of everything and this is where i still think and i'm a more of a newspaper and more of a digital writer less of a magazine person throughout my career but i do think there will be a joy of the printed magazine that will come back because there is this feeling that you know closer about a human connection and those connections have gone through this whole digital thing so i don't think it's going to just simply go completely digital right uh mehnas do you feel audience behavior has changed i think we all know that it has because consumption has been so much more uh, uh, you know online and digitally uh going forward is it going to be the video aspect because that really has been driving uh, social media platforms themselves for example instagram launched reels uh, there has been tiktok banned here but still doing very well globally so is video i mean i, I wouldn't say the next big thing uh, next big thing because it's been there but for publishing brands is that the way forward nena uh, so again like i said uh, video is also something that we've consciously moved together along with all our other assets um there is a certain quality to video which cannot be replicated unfortunately by print and there are a lot of takers for that which is why there's a lot of um it's actually easy because when you're uh, creating assets um uh, and stories uh there it's it's very easy to put together a video component for that as well and uh, honestly people are judging these by views and things and that becomes an entire new ball game because now you're yeah. judged by the number of uh the number of views and likes yeah. yeah so it's it's actually you're putting yourself out there to be judged and about like you know you got to uh, you got like so many views and this and that uh, <laughs> so it's um, while it is something that we're doing but you have to be very careful about it because the results are there for you to see here the website mm-hmm. back end you don't know like technically how many hits and this and all of that but your video mm-hmm. views on instagram are there for all to see so yeah. yes it is important and it's also important to put your best foot forward whenever you're doing video Okay so, so if I may add it's also yeah, I think some of the takeaways why you know when you said that you know some of the things that can't be captured in print it's vice versa as well right the joys of print is i mean is limitless and that i mean all of us i think in many ways even when sujata was doing was editing harper's bazaar everyone i think all of us treated the magazine like a coffee table book for that month so and there's infinite joy in that and i think that that also explains you know you do video you do reels but at the end of the day 
I mean, there's, there's, I mean, there's great joy to read a magazine where there are no notifications, you know, there's no school pop-ups, there's no, you know, I mean, there's nothing that's tempting. It's there, it's your time to sit and read and consume in a way that perhaps a video uh, or a reel will never give you that, you know, you may switch off in three seconds, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's like when a book becomes, yeah. the, the book. Yeah, exactly. In your own mind and your own head, and that's what a magazine gives you. And then the film, makes, of course, makes it more easeable, more easy, more math, more this. But the beauty of the book for those who love reading and those who are authentic to that will always remain. That will be the beauty of a fashion magazine. Yeah, because nobody's ever going to stop writing a, a book. I mean, you have a Kindle, but there are still authors every yeah, I day. Think. I mean, everyone's writing and the great joy is to see a book in hardback. And it's yes, it's great to you know download it on Kindle and all of those things. Yeah. But... I mean, I mean, the fact that you have e-books has never stopped a writer from writing another novel. Every novel has already been written. But, you know, you have to do it. You have to take... There's a reason why Vanity Fair still survives with great content. There's a reason why The Cut survives. And, and the latest issue of New York Magazine was a tribute to New York. So I think all of... I mean, and those are magazines that you would keep as collectibles. So I think at some point, I think everyone has to coexist. It's neither... We all lean on influencers when we want. They lean on us to also give them the power of access. And it has to work both ways. And I don't think we're at a time where each one is superior than the other. And I don't yeah. think we should ever think that. I just think that everyone's in the same machinery. We're trying to make something work. Yes, they may have access. Maybe sometimes we have a little more access. I just think it's just that. I do okay. think it's... Uh, though, because there was a kind of snobbery between journalists and... Yeah influences before this and now there's we are realizing we're in one world and there had been this whole talk about the editor influencer and I think that is the future that every journalist is going to be their own also little niche influencer and they're going to work side by side and perhaps Nandini is the best example of that. <laughs> yes <laughs> I think we'd all agree on that one uh, but you know I'd, I'd like to make some closing comments from all of you guys uh, starting with Nandini Nandri, we've spoken about how the, you know, digital first was already being thought of and perhaps what the pandemic did accelerated it. But what lies in the future when it comes to uh, fashion brands communicating to us via brands such as yours? I, I think that the future hopefully shall be bright. I think that there's a, there's, there, has, there has been this change uh, about, about the things that we talk of. Today, we are talking about clean beauty. We are talking about sustainable fashion. We were also talking about them earlier, but things have just moved in this way where both, both sort of buyers are now saying, listen, what is in this outfit? Who has, who has made this dress? What is in that cream of mine? So I think that, first of all, conversations have just changed totally, and that will only be bigger, louder as we move. I think that for brands, um, brands have also learned how to do things differently. Digital fashion weeks, right? I mean, yeah. until one year sort of back, if if you had said that we'll be doing digital first fashion weeks, somebody would have laughed at you. But now we have learned all of these brilliant skills, how to make fashion films, which would mean that tomorrow, if you cannot put up a sort of active physical show, that would mean that you've got option number two. Magazines future, I just think that we have all learned that, uh, that you know, digital isn't just a, like bag or a shoe. It is the sort of entire outfit. It is as critical as the actual print. We have learned that even though shoots in the beautiful lanes of let's say Paris will of course always have that great romantic joy. Um, but if we are stuck, we can certainly save money and we can shoot in other ways too. So I think learning's everywhere and the future should be bright. Well, when you put it like that, that you know, it's the entire yeah. outfit and <laughs> then I think we're all very hopeful. But Verna's your closing comments. So I think that while we've discussed what we do as brands, uh, it's also nice to know that the other brands, which is the non-media brands, as in the fashion brands, the beauty brands, all of them. Uh, I think the last few months has been a learning for them also. I think I'm hoping in the way they also produce, how they put out their communication, all of that. Like I've spoken to so many designers 
who aren't doing 10 collections a year but are being mindful about the way they produce uh cut down on the number of things they produce are moving towards um a seasonless collection just a lot of smaller mindful ways about uh, going ahead uh i think most commonly they've all said that they've had the time to reflect uh had the time to think about how they can uh scale back but not not scale back in the sense of what they do as a brand but scale back in terms of uh, being a little bit more responsible and mm. to kind of uh, encourage of uh, i don't know a positive outlook towards uh, consumption in general okay uh, supriya last words from you i think uh, i agree both with marinas and nandini and but the only point that i'd like to add is it also has given all of us time to think about the kind of stories that we want to tell whether it's the kind of i mean we uh, we live i mean we'll inhabit this world where everyone comes to us whether it's covers or whether it's a plug or all of those things but i think it i mean in it back i think sometime towards the end of march i think we were trying to figure out how we can work in this new normal where you've canceled a shoot but how do you do this and we uh, when i was at l we did a cover with jane goodall and i think it was just i mean for us i realized that okay we 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 treated sustainability as a larger issue and i think those were the kind of stories that i wanted to hear and read and perhaps you know give a, give it out to the universe so that you wanted a new set of readers to come in everyone was sitting at home everyone was trying to download a magazine mm. so i just think that besides sustainability and being mindful about how we consume products you know clothes all of those things i think there's also a time for us to understand how we consume the importance of what's valuable in terms of news people the mm. stories because that's what brought us to do what we were doing telling those stories yeah. about the people that fascinate us and continue to do so Uh, interesting so sujatha you know last words uh, from you uh, i think what's clear is that everybody's had their share of learning whether it's you know publishers or brands who are advertising uh, going forward how, how do you see all of that coming together i think what has happened is that there has been a reset button that's pressed just as we all know but the button hasn't finished being pressed we're still living through the pandemic so i don't think i can tell you what's going to happen i mean if anyone had told me we'd be seeing that tracksuits were the thing of 2000 <laughs> this time last year i would have laughed at you so i i don't think any of us can predict what's happening next i think what has happened as a the word everyone has used is mindful we have all become more mindful i think it has reminded all of us that we are journalists first we we talk about how fashion had gone out of whack fashion journalists had gone out of whack i'm really sorry we had forgotten how to write meaningful impactful stories fashion sits in the world of business it sits in the world of culture it sits in the world of you know what is going on in society and it's reminded us this is what we need to do and as long as journalists stick to that and remember that is what we are here for and that is what we need to do i think we will survive and i think this has just been a reset and it's reminded us all of what we really need to do and one thing i have to say i work in in three markets i work in the british market the uae market and the india market what i have seen about the india market and why i'm very proud to call myself part of the indian system is the way we all came together during this i saw editors go things aside i had discussions with nandini i had discussions with mehnaz i write for vogue but it all did not matter we all came together and i think there was this spirit that indian fashion had which i really hope continues even after we finished pressing the reset button always stronger together and said uh, jata and i think we've had some really uh, uh, interesting insights from all of you i think we can all agree that uh, you know digital first is done and dusted i think moving forward there will be learnings that we take in this pa- pandemic and uh, the reset button like sujata said uh, has been pressed uh, but i think uh, i'm not going to lie i do miss uh, physical fashion weeks and uh, i do hope that you know we we'll take all these learnings and report on fashion when the next big fashion week happens physically thank you so much uh, all of you for joining us and uh, of course stay tuned to the ftci handles uh, more such conversations coming up soon